Hey there, my friends. It is me, Alicia, if you are new here. Thanks for clicking on today's video. So today I'm actually really excited because we are gonna be doing some breakfast meal prep for our freezers. So it's always nice to have some meals that are already pre-made for mornings where there's just no time to do anything and you can just pull out something, heat it up, and it's good to go. So we're gonna make a couple different meals today and we're gonna fill our freezer with some good breakfast options. So let's get right into this. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, my friends, like my boy said, let's do this. Our very first breakfast is going to be some sausage and bacon breakfast sandwiches. So you can use any type of meat you want. I used to make these with Canadian bacon, which is a really good option. That's actually probably my favorite option, but I decided to switch it up because I had plenty of sausage in my fridge, so I wanted to use that. But I only had um, a couple slices of bacon. However, it worked out. I was able to make 12 breakfast sandwiches in total, seven sausage, and then five bacon. While my eggs are baking in the oven, I'm gonna fry up some bacon and then I'm also gonna fry up my sausages, which I'm gonna cut those sausages in half later just so that they fit the sandwiches better. And also, I'm gonna start toasting my English muffins. Now, I highly suggest doing this because it'll create a really nice barrier between the cheese, the egg, and then the meat that you do. It won't get soggy versus if you did not toast them. It just kinda of helps create that nice crispy barrier. For all the breakfasts that you see here today, I'm gonna to be using wax paper to wrap everything. It just helps preserve the freshness of the items, um, and it's a lot cheaper to use that than parchment paper. Or you can use foil too, which is fine, but wax paper I feel like is the way to go. It also just helps keep the food from getting soggy. You can also use it um, to heat up your food. I don't recommend, I don't think you can bake with it like parchment paper. I don't think you can get it that hot, but in the microwave will be fine. So if you ever decide to heat up whatever you put in your freezer, you can use the wax paper to heat it up with in the microwave. So once the eggs have cooled down, I cut them into 12 different squares. Now you can definitely use like a glass or a cookie cutter or something and make the rounds, but I don't want to be wasteful because that's just gonna create more like egg scraps. So I'm just gonna cut them into squares and put them on my toasted English muffins and then I'm going to split the bacon pieces in half so that they fit better. I'm also going to cut up the sausage in half too and I'm going to put two links per sandwich here so that's an entire package of sausage which is perfect for seven sandwiches. Now that the sandwiches are all wrapped up in their wax paper, I'm going to mark them with a Sharpie indicating what they are so that we can grab whatever we're filling. And I'm gonna stick these guys into a large two gallon sized freezer bags. These are awesome, especially for today's video because I'm able to get all of my foods into one two gallon bag. So I will link them down below. They are great. Also, when I'm placing the sandwiches in the bag, I'm alternating the different types of sandwiches so that not all of the sausage are on the bottom and not all the bacon are on the top, just so that it's easier access for whatever we are feeling that day. And to reheat these breakfast sandwiches, I will leave the instructions down below in the description box for you guys. From savory to sweet, we're gonna be doing some brioche French toast. I absolutely love making French toast. I have posted several different recipes on my blog and then here on my YouTube channel, but making French toast is just the easiest thing that you can do, especially if you can buy a bunch of bread at one time. Make it all at once and you have so much French toast left in the freezer and it is really delicious heated up in the air fryer I have discovered it the air fryer is literally becoming my best friend this past like month I would say I've been using it for so many different things but I used to recommend um, reheating these guys in the toaster I am not recommending that anymore I mean of course if you don't have an air fryer the toaster is the way to go but if you have an air fryer you absolutely have to warm it up in the air fryer it is so phenomenal it is exactly tastes exactly the same way as if I made it that same day so to make this french toast I am actually 
actually doubling my recipe and this bread came from Costco. I had to do a little mini Costco run and I saw these. I had not seen it a few weeks prior for my latest Costco haul. So I had to grab these because I knew I wanted to make French toast and these are delicious. Also, my daughter is helping me out here today. So you're going to see her. I'm trying to include her in the cooking. I like including all of my kids whenever I cook or bake or something because I think that it's very important for them to learn how to do this too. So for both boys and girls, I think they all need to learn how to make food at some point in their life. Earlier than later for sure. Okay. All right, stir, stir, stir. Stir, 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 my love. Okay, mama. You got it? Thank you, baby. You're super helpful. All right. I'm gonna get in here. Huh? Thank you, baby. You stirred it all for me? Thank you. You're so helpful. Okay, watch out. I'm gonna put some bread in here, okay? Okay, keep the spoon over there. There you go. Good girl. Bubbles. 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 Yeah, lots of bubbles, huh? Thank you, my love. Okay, put that back in there. Put that back in there. Thank you. Good job. You're so helpful. You want to see it? Yeah, I'll show you. Ooh, just don't touch it. It's hot. Okay. That's not good. Yeah, it's cooking. Once I have toasted all of my French toast, I'm going to set them on wire racks to cool completely. And then I'm gonna move them still on the wire racks into the freezer. So I'm just gonna do like a flash freeze um, just for like 30 to 45 minutes or so, just so that I can prepare to wrap them in wax paper. And this is how I personally like to wrap my French toast. I like to cut off a large piece of wax paper and I will place one French toast down. I will roll it so that it is completely covered with wax paper and then I will stick another piece of French toast on top of that, roll it over so that it's covered in wax paper and then add one more slice so that it's covered in wax and I just roll it up all the way. I like three French toast to one packet because I have three kids, um, so that works for me. But if you have four kids, do four or two, do two, do whatever you feel, but for me, three is the way to go. So to reheat these guys from frozen, I'm gonna grab some of my French toast. You can probably stick up to maybe four slices, I would say, in an air fryer. We are going to preheat it to 300 degrees and we're going to cook these guys for six minutes. And I am gonna flip them when it says to flip the food. So that would be at the three minute mark. And guys, they are warm in the middle, still crispy on the outside, but not hard, warm and delicious. I promise you, you will be obsessed heating them up in the air fryer this way. And our last freezer breakfast option are going to be some breakfast burritos. So for today's burritos, I'm gonna be making some chorizo con huevos and potatoes because that's what I have on hand. Now you definitely do not have to do chorizo, you don't have to do potatoes, you can do whatever you feel is good for you and your family. But I needed to use up some chorizo that I had in my freezer from a past Costco haul and so this was the perfect time to use this up. So this is delicious if you've never tried chorizo. It's it has like a spice to it. It's not like spicy, like temperature heat wise, but it's a lot of different spices in this pork chorizo. And then I had some russet potatoes I needed to use up. So you can see that I'm adding some olive oil to a dirty skillet. In fact, that skillet was for the bacon from the breakfast sandwiches. So I just decided to leave whatever was in there from the bacon and fry the potatoes up in that. But I needed some more fat, so I used the olive oil. And I'm just gonna season my potatoes with some garlic powder, onion powder, and salt and pepper and I'm gonna saute these guys up for about 15 to 20 minutes while I prep the rest of the meal so I'm gonna be using I think 10 eggs is what I wrote down here and then I'm also gonna be frying up the chorizo and the chorizo only takes about five to six minutes on the skillet so I'm just gonna let that fry up in the skillet before I pour in my eggs mm -hmm. And 
And while the eggs and chorizo and potatoes are cooking, I'm going to warm up 16 flour tortillas just to get them ready and prepped so that I can roll these up into little burritos. To make everything a little bit easier, I combined my potatoes and my eggs together so that it would just be easier to scoop out into portions. So how I do this is I place maybe about a quarter cup or so to a third cup of scrambled eggs in the center of the tortilla and I start with the sides. I fold the sides inwards and then I start rolling so that none of the contents fall out of the burritos. And then of course, using our handy dandy wax paper, we're gonna roll it um, the same, pretty much the same way that you would roll the burrito. You're gonna take the sides first, fold it over, and then just continue rolling. To reheat these frozen burritos, you're going to wet some paper towels just so that they're kind of damp, not soaking wet, but just a little damp. And then you're gonna place it around the burrito. So you're not gonna tightly do this, just lightly so that you can get some air in there to circulate. And you're gonna cook this in the microwave for one and a half minutes at 50% power. And then you're gonna flip it and you're gonna keep the paper towel on it, of course, and then cook it again for one and a half minutes at 50%. And then it should be nice and warm in the middle and the burritos will be nice and soft. So for today, I was able to make 12 breakfast sandwiches, 24 to 26 French toast slices, and then 16 breakfast burritos all in one day, guys. It was very simple, easy ingredients, and I think this will be very helpful in the future for any breakfast that you just need super fast. All right, friends, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe before leaving. I would really appreciate your support, and we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.